So let's compare some of the biggest guns of the guard and help us decide which turrets we want on our Lehman Rosses. Hello and welcome back to All Specs Tactics, the strategy and tactics focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. So over the last few weeks we've looked at Lehman Rosses and we've looked at tank commanders. We've already talked a little bit through the various merits of each of the guns, but I thought it was time to just put all the numbers in a table to show which of the guns do best against what. So in this video we'll see how all of the main Lehman Ross turrets that are available in the main codex perform against a whole variety of targets, and then we'll have a little bit of a talk about some of the other extrinsic factors as to why you might pick one over the other. So without further ado, let's take a look at the numbers. So here we have the average numbers of wounds inflicted in one round of shooting by a standard Lehman Ross, bearing each of the various turret options. We've assumed a regular Ross, not a tank commander, so naturally tank commanders are going to outperform here. We've not done anything fancy in terms of waiting with points like I normally do, and in terms of the executioner we are assuming that we're pressing the overcharge button. The targets we have are a guardsman, a tactical space marine, an intercessor with two wounds, a toughness 7 vehicle, and a toughness 3 5 up save imperial knight. So let's go through the guns one by one. First of all, we have the Battle Cannon, 72 inch range, which is definitely a bonus, though one of the more expensive variants. This one, unsurprisingly, has a decent, well rounded profile against all targets. It's not the best in any category, but it's certainly not the worst. It performs particularly well against knights and vehicles, putting three wounds on your standard tank, or two wounds a turn on your knight, even with no buffs. It'll also kill three guardsmen, or two tactical space marines, or three intercessors on average. I think it gives us a good baseline with which to compare. Below that we have the Lehman Ross Exterminator Auto Cannon, which is a bit of a sad state of affairs because against the regular Battle Cannon, against these targets it does underperform in all areas. It's not a load behind when we're looking at shooting at infantry, but it's significantly worse when we're targeting heavies such as vehicles or knights. You do save some costs by putting the Exterminator Auto Cannon on, but I think overall this really demonstrates why I much prefer the Battle Cannon. It's worth those few extra points. The Exterminator Auto Cannon does have a niche that isn't exactly shown by this set of numbers when you're targeting mid toughness models with high invul saves or very low armor saves. On things like Dark Eldar Venoms, the Exterminator does outperform the standard Battle Cannon, though admittedly not by loads and at a bit of a shorter range. Next, we have the Unloved Child of the Lehman Ross family, the poor Vanquisher, which Games Workshop has let languish in obsolescence since it first came out in 8th. It's supposed to be the premier anti-tank choice for long-range Lehman Ross fire, but is a massive victim of Games Workshop overvaluing single-shot, high-damage, high-AP weapons, or at least at the start of 8th. As it only has two shots when you're grinding advancing, it's understandably not particularly impressive against hordes, killing less than one on average, but even against pretty much its prime target, which are toughness 7 vehicles, even with roll 2 damage picked the highest, the standard battle cannon still comes out better. Again, it's cheap, but it's incredibly limited into one roll, and it doesn't even do that one roll particularly well. Maybe they'll fix you someday, Mr. Vanquisher, but until then I'm leaving you well alone. Next we have the Lehman Russ Eradicator. This is the one with the Strength 6, AP-2, Damage D3 profile that ignores cover. So basically, unless you're firing at infantry or vehicles that are in cover, it's always going to do the same or worse than the standard battle cannon, as it's basically the same thing with two pips less strength. Again, it costs a little bit less than the Battle Cannon, but that cheap cost does give you a hefty damage drop against hard targets such as the Knight or Standard Vehicle. Even when pointed at Intercessors or Tactical Marines, if they're actually in cover, it's only very slightly better than the Standard Battle Cannon. Ignore's cover is great, but I think between the two, Strength 8 is usually going to be more helpful. So again, the Standard Eradicator is just superseded by the Standard Rust for me. Next we come to the Demolisher with its new and very scary updated rules. The Demolisher is now Strength 10, AP-3, Damage D6, and it's Heavy D6 against all targets now, so basically the same stats as the Battle Cannon, but better in every way, apart from having short range. The Demolisher has some really impressive numbers on the go, as you can see here. It's decently strong against infantry, and is particularly better against intercessors compared with the Battle Cannon, due to having less chance of rolling a 1 for the damage result, and having higher AP. It really is against heavy vehicles that this thing really shines though. Against your standard toughness 7 targets, you get a whopping 6.8 wounds out of the demolisher, which is way above twice the output of your standard battle cannon. 
and know that this would be exactly the same if it was firing at Toughness 8, which the Battle Cannon suffers against a lot more. It's also very solid against the Imperial Knight, being the best of all of the weapons to take on this guy by a very long way. Obviously, you do pay for this enormous damage output in terms of short range. I'd personally be a lot more tempted to take Demolishers as Vostroyan to make sure I could more reliably get the targets that I needed in the crosshairs. I can honestly see Lehman Rust Demolishers being used in most competitive Imperial Guard lists at the moment. Their damage efficiency is really impressive. That Demolisher Cannon is basically the equivalent of firing 2d6 last cannon shots at your opponent. Not many things can do that. Moving on, we get to the Lehman Rust Executioner with its enormous Executioner Plasma Cannon. Again, this one is more short range than the Lehman Rust, but trades out that range for being a bit cheaper, 1 pip better AP, and flat 2 damage rather than D3. All this means that the Executioner is better against light infantry, or infantry and power armor, it's the best of any of the tanks against intercessors with their 2 wounds, and high armor save meaning that this thing has basically got them as its prime target. It's also one of the most efficient against the standard Toughness 7 vehicle, outperforming the Battle Cannon due to that extra AP. But of course you do have to bear in mind that you do have the chance of overcharging this thing, causing yourself a few mortal wounds, and you're ideally going to want a source of reroll ones. If you can get it, the range is also a factor. So a very interesting choice in my opinion. A little cheaper, generally higher damage output than the Lehman Rust, but with some significant downsides too. Next we get on to the Lehman Rust Punisher, the Gatling tank that saw a bit of a points hike in the new chapter approved, that can throw 40 strength 5 shots down the range. Unsurprisingly, the Punisher is uniquely equipped for dealing with one wound infantry. It'll happily munch through 9 guardsmen a turn, even unbuffed, or kill 3 tactical marines, and is the best in these categories. If your tactical marines gain cover though, then you are better with something with more AP, just because of that 2 up save being just so resistant to AP nothing. Against mid-toughness high safe targets, it's not very impressive, with one of the lowest efficiencies against the Toughness 7 vehicle. But interestingly, it isn't really all that bad at shooting at night, at least compared with some of the options here, just because you're still wounding Toughness 8 on 5s, so you are going to push through some wounds. I find it particularly hilarious that the Punisher Cannon is still stronger than the Vanquisher Cannon when you're targeting an Imperial Knight, which I'll be honest is a bit of a mess up in the rules writing department if we're trying to make these weapons fit the fluff on the tabletop. Finally we come to the Hammer of Sundrance. This is the Relic Battle Cannon from the Vigilus Defiant Formation, the Emperor's Fist Tank Company. This one's just a Battle Cannon with flat damage 3 rather than damage D3, so unsurprisingly it isn't any worse than the standard Battle Cannon in anything. This one's a really solid relic to take, just because you get all of this massive firepower at a whopping 72 inch range, so it's a really strong backline tank that you can keep out of harm's way, hopefully plugging away all game long. It's interesting to note that it doesn't even come close to beating the Demolisher against hard targets. The Demolisher Cannon really is that powerful now, even when it's competing with a souped up relic battle cannon. Obviously the range is the major trade off between these two, so it's not just an open and shot case. Finally. I'll just mention the Lehman Russ Annihilator with the last cannon shots, which I didn't include in this main analysis, just because it's not a codex option, and we'll get onto the Forge World Lehman Rosses in due course. For those that are interested, naturally it doesn't really do much against infantry, it does 3.9 wounds against an average Toughness 7 vehicle, so about on par with the Executioner, and 3.1 wounds against your Imperial Knight, so barring the Demolisher and the Hammer of Sundrance, it's the best at taking out Imperial Knights, and it's kind of doing the job that the Vanquisher Cannon should be really. So that's the main maths then, obviously there are plenty of other extrinsic factors that might vary whether you take one or another, we've mentioned it several times but range is a big issue, the lower ranged variants are certainly going to be more appealing in Vostroen, and you are going to want some sort of long range firepower and you are going to be paying a premium for that over the high efficiency of the Demolisher and Punisher against their relative targets. Points cost is also an issue, although to be honest, on Lehman Rust chassis, the actual price of the gun isn't as big a deal as some people often make it out to be. The thing is, you're already buying a tank that's over 100 points, so the actual difference between the weapon variants is actually only quite a small proportion in addition to the tank that you're already buying. For example, the Lehman Rus Executioner costs 18 points for the turret, and the Battle Cannon costs 22. So you think, oh, that's quite a big difference. The Battle Cannon's almost an extra 50% over the cost. But if you actually weigh up the two units that you can take, the Battle Cannon Rus or the Executioner Rus, then the cheapest Executioner Rus is 130 points, and the cheapest Battle Cannon one is 137. If you're going to be investing so much in the tank already, then the 7 point difference between the two is actually quite negligible. 
so the majority of the time you should probably just pick the gun that best suits the damage profile that you need. Other things that might influence you one over the other are certain regiment traits, reroll ones for Cadium might make you want to pick up an executioner a bit more, rerolling the number of shots on a Katachan Rust certainly pushes you the way of battle cannons and demolishers and executioners and things that trigger that rule. And we've already said that the short range variants will certainly profit from being Vostroin. Overall, I think that there's definitely a niche for most of these, depending on exactly what sort of firepower you're looking for. The only ones that I wouldn't run pretty much under any circumstances at the moment are the Exterminator, Vanquisher and Eradicator, as I feel they are eclipsed by the other variants. I know some people love their Exterminators though, and it isn't really significantly far behind the Battle Cannon. It'll still give you plenty of good results against most targets for a little bit cheaper with its own particular niche at light vehicles with low armour. At the moment though, the bus that has me the most excited to run it on the tabletop is the Demolisher. I think that it is pretty much the most efficient anti-tank in the entire Guard Codex at the moment, particularly if you push it on a tank commander chassis. A Vostroin Demolisher ordering itself to re-roll ones to hit will cause an average of 10 or 11 wounds on any toughness 7 or 8 vehicle. So it's typically going to have a very good chance of one-shotting whatever tank it decides to go after each turn. It's really quite a nice scary threat to throw up the table and force your opponent to deal with. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Which Rosses have you been enjoying using recently? And does the maths back up? And does the maths back up your experience on the tabletop? I'll be continuing with my guard series every two days going on into the future. So check back Monday on All Specs Tactics for another upload. Thanks very much for listening. If you'd like to support the channel I do have a Patreon page. The link's in the description below, and anyone who pledges to support will gain access to some early videos, my own tournament lists when I attend tournaments, and some other things as well. These videos take quite a while to make, so any support you can spare is of course greatly appreciated. Thanks again for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.